Hey there, this is your host, Selena Robinson. You are listening to Journey to Gentle Podcast. I am a mama sharing my journey so you feel less alone, more educated, and more confident in your journey. Thank you for tuning in. And on our journey today, we will be talking about Black Breastfeeding Week, which I'm kind of excited about. So August 25th through 31st is Black Breastfeeding Week. And before we get started, it's early in the morning. You can probably hear my youngest in the background whining a bit outside of the room. Maybe even hear the TV. Don't know, but that's kind of my journey right now. So let's jump into it. So most of the information that I'm going to be reading to you comes off of the Black Breastfeeding Week website. And that is blackbreastfeedingweek.org. And they have um, some reasons why Black Breastfeeding Week is important. Why is it needed? And the reason why I wanted to cover this topic is because I know that there are groups of people who think that having something specifically for black people or for a specific race is divisive and it's making everything about race and they don't understand why there's this thing that needs to be separate for black people, uh, especially in terms of like breastfeeding when all people that breastfeed need support. So I wanted to go through uh, the reasons why Black Breastfeeding Week is important. So I am a Black woman. I have two Black kids and I breastfed and feed them both. So my oldest, I breastfed for two and a half years and my youngest is, I don't know, uh, let's see, he was born in June and it's August. He is 14, almost 15 months old, and I am still breastfeeding him. And yeah, it's been a journey, very difficult journey, though I will say that because I live in communities that are mostly white and I live in Washington, so it is more of a progressive state, uh, that my journey is going to be different for someone who lives in the South or lives in a mostly black community. So yeah, let's go on ahead and get into the reasons why a Black Breastfeeding Week is needed is still important. A uh, high Black infant mortality rate. Black babies are dying at twice the rate, in some places it's nearly triple the rate, of white babies. Uh, the high infant mortality rate among black infants is mostly due to them being born too small, too sick, or too soon. And these babies need the immunities and nutritional benefits of breast milk the most. Uh, and what isn't listed on here, but is also important in terms of infant mortality rate, is also that breastfeeding decreases the risk of SIDS in babies. So uh, there's that too. Um, let's see. According to the CDC, increased breastfeeding among Black women could decrease infant mortality rates by as much as 50%. 50! Like, that's quite a bit. Uh, also, when I was looking up the, uh, does breastfeeding reduce the risk of SIDS? Breastfeeding can also reduce the risk of SIDS by 50% across all ages for infants. Uh, another reason it's important is high rates of diet-related disease. And again, remember, I'm getting this stuff off blackbreastfeedingweek.org, and there are also other, several other sites that have uh, different reasons. I have Forbes up here because they posted an article. Uh, and they included something that's not included here. But, um, okay, so when you look at all the health conditions that breast milk has been proven to reduce the risks of, African American children have most of them. So, like upper respiratory infection, type 2 diabetes, asthma, childhood obesity, these issues run rampant within the community. 
and breast milk can help prevent or lessen the risk that a child will get these things. The next reason is lack of diversity in the lactation field. So uh, when my oldest was born, the lactation consultant that came to see me in the hospital room was white. For my youngest, I want to say uh, who the person who came to see me in my room was also white. And then I went to see a lactation consultant also because of the issues that we were having. And she was also white. And honestly, I'm thankful for the opportunity to even be able to go and see a lactation consultant because that is not an opportunity that a lot of people, a lot of black people have. Uh, many people with lack of health insurance or just a lack of these resources within their community. So a lack of diversity in the lactation field. So, um, breastfeeding advocacy is white female led. It unfortunately perpetuates the common misconception that black women don't breastfeed. It also means that many of the lactation professionals, though well-intentioned, are not culturally competent, sensitive, or relevant enough to properly deal with African-American moms. Uh, this is a week to discuss the lack of diversity among lactation consultants and to change our narrative. Uh, okay, so unique cultural barriers among black women. He's still trying to get in here. Okay, unique cultural barriers among black women. And this is this one is about history. So black women also have unique cultural barriers and complex history connected to breastfeeding. Uh, from our wo role as wet nurses in slavery, being forced to breastfeed and nurture our slave owners' children, often to the detriment of our own children, to the lack of mainstream role models and multi-generational support to our own stereotyping within our community. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about within this is the wet nursing. I actually pulled up a poem. I actually pull up a poem. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it is by Heslove. And I'm going to read this poem for you guys. I wish I dried up. I wish every drop of my milk slipped past those pink lips and nourished the ground where the bones lay of my babies, starved while I feed their murderer. I wish I dried up so the missus babies would dry up too and be brittle so I could crumble them to dust, return them to the ground where all children of my bosom lay equal. And yeah, like when I saw this, it really kind of, uh, when I first read this poem, it really kind of solidified the importance of a Black Breastfeeding Week for me. Uh, going back to the blackbreastfeedingweek.org uh, website. So like when they say like lack of multi-generational support and a lack of mainstream role models, those are connected to this history. Uh, the role of being wet nurses during slavery. And breastfeeding became this thing that was associated with death and with oppression and with slavery. And so Black people as a whole typically tend to move away from things that represent oppression or that we feel represents oppression. And for the longest time, breast that that is what breastfeeding meant. That was the memory of breastfeeding for our ancestors. So the lack of support comes from this push to get away from that oppressive, that oppressive past. And, uh, the stereotyping within our own community. And so that also comes from, it, it is still connected to that, right? Because breastfeeding is seen as like white people shit. <laughs> it's stuff white people do, black people don't do that. And it's also trying to like establish ourselves as a community, 
outside of whiteness, which for the longest time meant avoiding uh, certain things and breastfeeding being one of them. So yeah, like if you were to breastfeed, then you were seen as trying to be white or trying to be something that you're not. And so this is, these are the cultural barriers that Black women are having to fight against. And we're having to reclaim breastfeeding as something that isn't about death, but rather something that is about life and nurturing and freedom. We have to take it back and reclaim it from uh, that oppressive past. I do want to go over a few things that are in this Forbes article. And um, let's see, they have some statistics here that were not on the Black Breastfeeding Week website. And so I do want to list these statistics. See, they they have a reason on here. Uh, Black women in the United States experience unexpectedly poor maternal health outcomes. That is true. It is dangerous to uh, give birth as a Black woman in the United States. And I was actually afraid of uh, giving birth with my second when this is something that I've learned. Like, I believe a lot of the southern states in the U.S. have high mortality rates for Black women. And that is scary. So this says Black women are three to four times more likely to experience a pregnancy-related death than a white woman. Uh, the This heightened risk for Black women spans income and education levels. So while white women's birth outcomes improve as they are more educated and have more income, the same is not true for Black women even when factors like educational status and income are accounted for in research, Black women are still disproportionately impacted and experience the same disadvantages and dangers, which, whoa, super freaking scary. (laughs) And so making sure that within the health community, that career, that there are people who care about you, people who uh, understand the cultural impacts, people who understand uh, where you're coming from and your fears, because this is a fear that a white woman is not, well, it's not, I can understand having the fear of death around pregnancy. It's slightly different though, when it doesn't matter how educated or how much money you have, there's still this huge risk of you being dismissed about how you are feeling after you give birth and your concerns being dismissed and ending up dying, which typically is what happens, whether it be the lack of education or having education and money and bringing these concerns and they're like, no, that's normal. And then that's typically how a lot of women end up um, passing away. Uh, Black women breastfeed at a lower percentage rate than white women do. The data shows that 85% of black women, uh, oh my gosh, that 85% of white women have breastfed versus 69% of black women. So that kind of shows the disparity there that uh, there is a lot less uh, black women breastfeeding than white women. Uh, And this is one that I haven't seen mentioned anywhere, and it's definitely relevant to today and what's going on in the United States. COVID-19 has magnified the effects of pre-existing barriers to breastfeeding. Let's see, the pandemic has tragically exposed uh, the impact of racial inequities in health. Black communities have been disproportionately impacted by the virus. Uh, Compared to their white counterparts, nearly three times as many Black folks died from it. COVID-19 has also caused the disruption or discontinuation of evidence-based interventions for Black 
breastfeeding support, such as peer-led support and community-based interventions. The burden of providing breastfeeding education, promotion, and lactation is shifting to online spaces. And it's more important than ever for Black communities to be equipped with the tools needed to repair the harms to breastfeeding norms among Black families. So can you, like, think about this? If this support is shifting to online. Not everybody has access to this. Not everybody has internet in their homes or computers. So these online spaces aren't accessible to everyone, which means that less people are able to get help. Less people are able to seek help if they were even able to seek help uh, to begin with, you know, like if they even had the income to be able to pay for a lactation consultant or if they even had um, health insurance that covered seeing a lactation consultant. COVID-19 is making it harder for people to be able to access those resources. And all of this, everything that I have said within this podcast is the reason why Black Breastfeeding Week is so important. We have to be able to take back this thing that for us represented death and oppression and change it into something that means life and nurturing. We also need the tools to be able to continue doing this because as uh, time goes on, as the child gets older, breastfeeding rates drop. And a lot of people who maybe tried to in the beginning end up giving up because breastfeeding, it might be a natural thing to do, but it does not come naturally. Breastfeeding in the beginning can be very hard. I had trouble with both of my kiddos. My oldest actually ended up not being able to nurse without a nipple shield for six, eight months, somewhere around that time period. And I had to wean him off using a nipple shield. Uh, Because it would suck whenever we would go out. He had so many doctor's appointments and I would forget it and he wouldn't be able to nurse without it. I honestly forgot where I, what point I was making with that comment. (laughs) Yeah, breastfeeding rates drop off because breastfeeding is not easy. And then the support isn't there within the communities. Like I'm lucky that my family was supportive of me breastfeeding, breastfeeding however I wanted to. So with or without a cover, they wanted to make sure that I was comfortable. Um, And I had the support, but not everybody does. So after a certain point, I did start getting comments about when I was going to stop weaning. Um, And I'm sure that other black people get comments saying, you know, that's white people shit. And that black people don't do that. And you're trying to be white by doing this. There's like a huge stigma around it. More people are being more and more accepting of it. But we still have a long way to go. You know what? I think that is going to be it. So tell me what you think. Did I leave anything out? Do you have any other information that you would like to share? What are your thoughts around Black Breastfeeding Week and its importance to the Black community? Uh, Subscribe if you like what you're hearing. Check out ways to support the podcast in the show notes. Follow me on social media at Journey to Gentle. And that is it for our journey today. And until next time, bye.